hit me. From Studio P in Sausalito, the home of the hit, it's time for... Suckatash. Yes, Suckatash, the comedy soundcast soundcast featuring snippets from comedy... Soundcasts. And also interviews with comedians, comedian soundcasters, and other showbiz folk. And now, here's your host, internationally recognized comedy soundcast soundcaster, Mark... Hersha. Mark. Mark. Howdy do, my beautiful Succotashians. Even if this is your very first time applying our audaciously fragrant soundcast to your ear holes, we still regard you as one of us. That's how inclusive and woke Succotash, the comedy soundcast soundcast is. In fact, we consider ourselves to be woke, the past tense of woke, because we're so far beyond that. What am I saying? There might be an exhaust leak going on right now in my mobile studio MX-30, except this is my Mazda EV, so that's not even possible. Oh well, where are my manners? This is Mark Hershon, your every other weekly host for this show, and you're listening to episode 340. And with no clips featured this time around, this will be our very first Succotash chat of the year. If you missed last week's installment, then I'll wait until you go back and grab Epi 339 with our delightful and alternating co-host, Tyson Saner. T-Bone, a nickname I've never called him before, celebrated hosting his 100th Succotas show by cranking out a quartet of tasty clip bits from the show's The Movies That Made Me, Of Mice and Men and Monsters, The Three Questions with Andy Richter, and Sensibly Cynical. You can find it all across the Soundcastiverse, from Apple and Google Podcasts and Spotify, to SoundCloud, Amazon Music, Audible, iHeartRadio, and many, many other distribution points. If all else fails, or maybe try here first, hop over to our home site at SuccotashShow.com. As for this episode, and isn't that why we're all gathered here today? My special guest is Dr. London Smith. He's the host of the Jock Doc Podcast, a soundcast we've not only featured here before, but which I was fortunate and delighted to have been invited to appear on several times. Their show features a little bit of similarity to Comedy Bang Bang in that London and his producer Cameron have guests on who are always portraying interesting and mostly insane characters. My chat with London goes into some interesting territory, and we spend a lot of time discussing the move he's currently making in his career, Away from medicine, he's actually got bona fide doctor training and practice in his arsenal, and towards acting and comedy. He goes into When He Was a Child Star, a title that I think has merit, as he was the lead in a movie when he was 12 years old. We'll hear more about that. It's a lengthy chat, so I'm going to get right into it, right after this brand new commercial from our longtime broke-ass sponsor, Henderson's Pants, and their new supply chain issue pants. Take it away, Bill Haywatt. Hey everybody, Bill Haywatt here for Henderson's Pants, the official pants of the Lower Tanzanian Curling Team. You know, with summer just around the corner, it's time to start thinking about how the well-dressed man of today wants to present himself in the longer, hotter days of tomorrow. And that's why Henderson's has created a line of contemporary trousers so light and cool, so loose and flexible, you'll feel like you're not wearing any pants at all because you're not. Introducing Henderson's Supply Chain Issue Pants. You know, in this climate-changed, pandemic-riddled, war-torn little world of ours, supply chain issues are sadly here to stay, and the garment industry is no exception. These pants have the look and feel of nothing you've ever seen before because they quite simply do not exist. Yes, every single piece of these exquisitely designed trousers from the fine French fabric to the hand-tooled Bulgarian belt loops to the solid alloy brass Zanzibar zipper to the all-American computer-stitched back pocket logo embroidery, all of it has been unavoidably delayed because of Yes, you guessed it, supply chain issues. And just like every other savvy business person these days, old man Henderson has thoughtfully decided to pass his added expense and inconvenience along to you. From beach to boardroom, from downtown to down home, Henderson's supply chain issue pants are guaranteed to make a lasting impression on everyone you meet. 
Imagine the attention you'll get as you proudly proclaim to your boss, your buds, even to random strangers on the street, hey, it's not me, it's Henderson's Pants Supply Chain Issues. Henderson Supply Chain Issue Pants are always one size fits all and come in every color you could possibly imagine. Especially designed for Bitcoin investors, pen pals of Nigerian princes, and all those who are easily taken to the cleaners, Henderson Supply Chain Issue Pants are available wherever you truly believe they are. That's Henderson's, fabricating fantasies out of whole cloth since 55 BC. And now, back to... Sagatash. London, Dr. London Smith, still a doctor. Dr. Yes. London Smith from the Jock Doc podcast is joining us. Uh, it's been a while since we've had you on, but it's uh, not been a while since I was on your show. So mm -hmm. I was remiss, but happy new year to you. I think I can still say that. Yes. And to you. Yeah, I think you can do it right up until the next one. And then I think it's the same line. <laughs> Just remember to change the date on the checks. Those who still use checks. I don't. Yeah, I, I, you can use them for me. I don't, yeah, I don't mind. Oh, I'll send you one. Okay. Checks. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> well, welcome. You look good. You look happy. Thank you. Yeah, it's, uh, as I was describing just before this, I uh, recently made the switch from just focusing on studying medicine to, and I, I, part of my podcast is medical. That's part of the prank on the listeners is that I teach a real medical lesson. Yeah. That's for me, that's the biggest joke of it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that every week I actually put in the work and write a real medical lesson. So I'm well, never, that's, all, that's yeah. all the medical training I've gotten is just listening to your show. So yeah, I've got an archive of everything you've said. So if I ever have any of those symptoms, I just go back and yeah. listen to the jock doc podcast. Yeah. And I'm only ashamed of a few of them for, for how outdated my stuff was. If everyone has anyone out there gets a C diff, an infection in their colon, boy, that episode's not going to steer you the right way. That's Ooh. You should actually go to a doctor for that one. The rest, Ooh. yeah. What, um, about, what about demons? Is it still a hot stove lid on the stomach? Uh, ooh, it's. I'm I'm trying to think back to the most recent <laughs> research on it. Uh, I did. It's uh, it, it's gonna take. You're gonna want to go to the hospital for it. Okay. Okay. Just to hang though. That's good. But you were saying so. You've made the switch in your personal life. You're still doing. Yeah. The jock doc. I'm I'm still a board member for a thing, medical yeah. train uh, for an exam medical exam thing. I'm still an adjunct professor of medicine, technically. I think for a thing that's been in post production. So if I'm you're not, on a if you're on a plane and there's mm -hmm. an emergency and a flight attendant gets on the PA and says, "Is there a doctor on the flight?" Then it, I will have more anxiety than anyone else on that flight. But can you raise your hand and say, yeah. "Yes, I can yeah, help I can. this person." Anyone? Just, look, I just anyone hope they don't. I hope they don't have C diff or demons. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, either one of those and I'll be, whew. I mean, I'll still wing it, but uh, I can, I can spill the beans on the first thing you do. If you're a doctor in that situation though. Yes. You uh, call, you, you go up to where, wherever they at the front of the plane and you can radio in cause they have a doctor on the ground somewhere. Oh. And that's the first move you're supposed to make as a doctor. They, I only know this because a friend of mine who's practicing, he's like, because they don't teach that in textbooks, but he oh. had an exam question on it. So now, you know, listener. So you, so you, so I could go up and say, yeah. yes, I'm a doctor. Just let me get on the horn to the ground doctor yeah. and we're in business. <laughs> and let's hope he can tell me how to use a stethoscope, take right? blood pressure. Yeah. I hope he's not some guy that just said, Hey, I heard this great trick. If they yeah. call from the plane and need a doctor, <laughs> you just say your doctor, they will bring mm -hmm. you a Coca-Cola and a free yeah. lunch while you talk to the guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a lot of a lot of, if you it's a lot of faking it till you make it situations in <laughs> so, medicine. So you're you're saying you're still doing a lot of the doctory stuff, but now there is a new layer. Yeah. The London Smith, a new well, exciting mm -hmm. layer. There's there's this I, I I would also say it's not necessarily a new one because um I was a child actor back right, in the day. So right. it's it's revisiting these old. Th so the fortunate thing about making this decision was um, I have a resume that I started in a feature film. I won uh, the young filmmaker award at the Austin film festival when I was 12. And what so, was the film? What was the, uh, film? it was called not it exclamation point. And that is on YouTube. And I think it still holds up. Uh, I've been told that it still holds up. Oh, come on. You've watched it. 
uh just well, part yeah. at least part of it come yeah, on i i don't watch it as often as i used to that's more what i mean yeah it's just I, less i do that viewings. with i do that with my movies i just found yeah. out the halloween one i did for hallmark is actually somebody uploaded it to youtube like two months ago and awesome. so so now I, I i like put that tag you know i'll put the the link to somebody and go hey watch my movie from 20 years ago oh yeah i do with a with the so I did that awesome film festival and I started a feature film using that sort of as an audition and that one I had on YouTube and I loved it because mm. for, until they had the, the just for kids setting because now it's set to, to for kids but before that setting was there I would get so roasted in the comments and I loved it <laughs> you know it's I was 12 years old I had buck teeth you know it was it was li- my acting skills that got me the role it was not my looks uh, <laughs> And uh, which I get a bit of a rarity in Hollywood for that time, but yeah, I was back then I was skilled and I'm, and I'm learning cautiously that I appear to still be. So Um, you're honing, you're honing those, those skills, bringing them back. Yeah. The tale of how I made that decision. Cause it was like a pretty distinctive time. I have a friend, uh, Chase O'Donnell. She's a stand-up comedian. She features for Christina P currently. Um, so Okay. Uh, she's actually she has her comedy special coming out on february 9th that, oh, on youtube so okay. chase o'donnell chase check O'Donnell. her out yeah she's she's super nice little plug for chase there yeah uh so she got me a part on this um comedy show that she was doing it's made for tiktok it's called david diamond hands still in post-production oh okay uh david yeah. diamond hands and uh so but she, and i said hey um because she's flying to texas she's from la I wanted to hang out if I could. And I was saying like, oh, I could maybe you up over there. She said, I can't hang out outside of set, but if you want to be in it, then there's a part for you. So I was like, what? Yeah. she's like, it's unpaid, but a featured thing. So I went there and it was like a real set. They like, you know, but like the full cast and crew and everything. That's and they, exciting. Uh, yeah. It was, and it was, it answered this question that hovers in your mind. If you were, for everyone out there who is also a former child actor, comedian, doctor, contortionist. Uh, and and the, answers, list, the list yeah. is endless, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Uh, then you can uh, be in this situation where you are on set for, I think it was 11 hours of shooting and you, you're, uh, I earned my lines by, it was non, a non-union. Uh, oh. So I earned my lines by improvising with uh, um, the scene partner, Ahmed. Ahmed loves bread. He was he's a comedian as well uh yeah very funny person and uh he the way that i i had no idea what the production was they asked me uh or he he asked me a question when the scene started which meant i had to say something so uh that's how i got lines is he asked me a question and then i came up with an answer that you know created conflict whatever and then created a new scene so anyway that day it was like 11 hours of euphoria for me. So what, what is the movie? Can you, can you talk uh, about uh, it's, uh, well, that's David Diamond hands. It's oh, that's like a David be, Diamond hands. It's a show, TV thing. show. It's yes. a TV show. Yeah. Well, I'd say it's a TikTok show. I the believe tic- is the target for it. TikTok uh, show. Yeah. Well, that's very cool. Yeah. Well, I am excited to see David Diamond hands. Yeah. And it's a, uh, uh, yeah. Once again, just the small role, but I like the directors told me I created a scene basically with, with that my well, that's response fan, that's fantastic enough. though yeah. that's to be able to do your own your own lines and stuff that's amazing yeah and it's and it was what convinced me i was because the main concern is am i idealizing this because i was you know eight years old in hollywood perfect weather all the time <laughs> getting to play by being characters i like it's just playtime uh, am i idealizing it but then once again 11 hours of shooting uh we were just busy for all of it and i, yeah. but I no i was dancing between scenes loving it uh and, and so yeah and that, so that's what touched it off said i'm i'm yeah. making this move yeah I, I mean like i gave it another day to make sure i wasn't you know tricking myself but once again <laughs> it was like it was being on a high i was it was i was like manic over it whatever well <laughs> it was that feeling I mean, that's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, now you're still living in, in Austin, right? Uh, I'm, I'm living in Rockwell, Texas. Uh, oh, so Rockwell, Dallas. that's right. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. yeah you're in Texas. But uh, yeah, not Are even you... as such Austin would be better for, for the yeah. business. There's not a whole lot going down in Rockwell as yeah. I understand it, but yeah. are you, is, is there a plan to make the move to LA at this point? Uh, the, the moment, not a, the moment that financially it's not a stupid idea, then yes. <laughs> uh, which 
uh, I don't know if you've heard, there are a lot of people who tried the move without the home plan and it's not working no, out I, well. I, I did it. I did it. I, I went back and forth to LA for three, four times and said, this time it's going to pay off. And eventually it did, but yeah, you want to have like a nice solid cushion. Before, yeah. Yeah. Which before I, you go there. So will you do stand up? Thing. Cause I know you've been working on your stand up oh, yeah. act. That's uh, so another thing that, that helped me to, to prompt me in all this direction was last year. I was, uh, there was one of these nationwide casting calls. I was, you know, I found it on Facebook, whatever. And it was saying there's a sketch comedy show and I, uh, auditioned for it, got on it. Um, but it turned out that it was the pilot. So it was a pilot pitch. Um, so it was, it never was made into a show, but it had me thinking if I got cast in this, I need to have a lot ready. Uh, yeah. like I, I don't want to have to think of all of it in the moment or the yeah. day before That's I want very to cheat difficult. on this show. Yes. Yeah. So, um, anyway, so I've been writing stand up, and yeah, I've got at this point, Oh, here's another plug I can do. Um, it's twitch.tv slash William does streaming, uh, twitch, twitch, twitch.tv TV slash. slash William does streaming. It's okay. uh, William Keen. He books shows in, uh, in New York. And he okay. does stand up as well, but he does a stand up workshop on Tuesdays at uh, 8 p.m. Eastern time. And uh, that comedian Chase, she's the one who told me about it. She does workshops her stand up on there. Okay. So I, every most weeks, I, I hop on there and um, oh, sweet workshop things. So yeah, I've got a, uh, yeah, I think I've got, well, I want to say 15, 20 minutes of stuff ready. Excellent. Uh, yeah, so the last time we interfaced about your, your stand-up, you were doing sort of experimenting with kind of a storytelling kind of approach. Yeah. Um, has That's, that yeah. has that matured? Has it changed? It's uh, well. The reason it began that way is because I would present an anecdote, and I've seen very little stand-up comedy because I here's cards on the table. I don't care for it that much. <laughs> uh, I've <laughs> the thing is, I I watched um, if we talk about comedy inspirations um, in terms of writing. Uh, comedy, especially um, St Steve Martin, is kind of the role model okay. for stand up for me. But his stuff was a whole lot of sort of one off. If you watch his original stand up from yeah, the seventies, quirky. I yeah. yeah, I actually saw him live back in the day at uh, oh, awesome Cal Berkeley. Yeah, oh, I'm jealous of that. Yeah, that was great. That was great. Yeah. But yeah, very very sort of eclectic, goofy. Yeah, one, one liners and you mm. know just sort of weird. Yeah tangents and flights of fancy and stuff yeah. yeah so that's that's what i'm writing towards uh okay. with mine but um the, so his is the stand-up that like i've watched that a number of times and I've, i've rewatched it here and there to to get the vibe of it but um you know what i have and what's normal for stand-up is stories from my life that are really weird like the time mm -hmm. whenever i was in med school in the caribbean and we dissected cadavers and then at the end of the semester you have to dismember the bodies to put them away and uh to, to by put them away i mean put them into a furnace um and then last day of school <laughs> not a nice little packages where yeah. they go for the next class i I, th I believe that we saw just like you know trash bags whatever and then they took them <laughs> elsewhere and there's a little little forest and smoke coming up from it and that that's what we had as okay. an and then the last day and this is this is the the, the bones of what is now i think one of my five minute sets uh <laughs> but then uh yeah at the end of the semester we had to clean it up but the problem is we only had i think two hours and three body four bodies maybe and 20 students and three bone saws to go and they're they're manual they're not electric so and one of them was like tiny so like you couldn't really so, so you're you're having to twist limbs off that's that's what it turned into like and you're having to just try to be there be quick on your feet oh we're we're so, you, so so this class would have been like an elite team later on if if somebody was going to commit a murder and said yeah i need someone who can get rid of these bodies you know what i know yeah. some guys yeah it's it's a lot of training of uh yeah how you know how easy is it to rip this limb off versus this one um uh, and like genuinely that's that became the train of thought in the class so me taking that cons that that story and then 
I take it to this workshop and I, I read, I have it written out in the way that I do. I've read a lot more humorous essays than I have seen stand up comedy. Okay. Or I say, I should say good stand up comedy. I've seen open mics. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, so that's, that's why it's, they start out in that form. And then yes. I whittle, 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 whittle. And now they're, um, I, I believe significantly better in, in large part, thanks to that, that workshop. So. Oh, good. Well, what, uh, it, we, which is the easiest limb to remove from a, from uh, a bot? From a let's bot. see. It would be the, the arm. Um, the arm. Okay. Yeah. The, the shoulder. And I, I could have told you this without dissecting a body because uh, <laughs> I happen to be a contortionist as well. And with, oh. with knowledge of um, how these joints work. So the knees are, uh, you know, hinge joint. It's yeah. just like a hinge on a door or whatever. The shoulders are more loosely in there. Uh, so you'll- Because that's people... like the ball and socket thing, right? Yeah, yeah. And the hip, the hip is similar, but a little bit more secure. Uh, yeah, there's more ligaments yeah. and meat in there, mm-hmm. right? So it's and, Yeah, to... just, just a big old thing. But, All right, but so if, shoulders... you are dis- if you are dismembering uh, a corpse, just mm-hmm. uh, you know, take, take some notes because um, uh, I think we're at London can help you get, yeah. get the job done quickly. Or just, you know, hire me to, to perform stand up for you to learn. That's it's it's all about teaching. Well, you know, people yeah. watch YouTube to learn stuff anyway. They may not, yeah. maybe they'll watch you for more than comedy. Yeah. Come for uh, the comedy, yeah. stay for the life lesson. Right. <laughs> and all the life lessons will be, yeah, very much about dismembering a corpse. Very um, so now yeah. how is how is uh, this this work you're doing on yourself in terms of your comedy and your acting? Is it is it doing anything in terms of uh, performance for the jock doc podcast. It's what the, the sort of really nice scenario that I currently have going for me is that, um, I'll put, I'll write down an idea and I've been doing it for years for the podcast. I have just podcast notes and it's any stupid thing I come up with. Um, you know, it's just an offhand, you know, silly thoughts. And then you put, I put that into one set of notes and then I see if I can make it work on the podcast. And sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Also, we don't hear back. The podcast goes out there and I don't hear back. So yeah, I used it at least. And then <laughs> I, I look at the notes again and I think uh, I could make this work as a stand-up joke. Like I, I have a few and I have other ones that do, here I have. Let me read off one that um, uh, I know did not work <laughs> uh, in stand-up. Oh, and it, you know, I, I can just tell it to you. It's not loading. Sure. Um, yeah. Uh, so I read on the news today that Alphabet cereal was sued for libel. The concept being just that you're eating your Alphabet soup <laughs> and it spells out some some untrue statement. Uh, <laughs> and to me, that was a great concept. But I it I, I think it, if it worked on the podcast, it barely worked. <laughs> I love the concept. It just needs yeah. to be packaged the right way. It's, yeah. it's actually a very funny uh, sort of uh, uh, non sequitur yeah. kind the, of joke. The bright, yeah. The bright side to it, though, is that I can also, uh, and everyone, all the writers listening are like, yes, I'll, I'll steal that now. Yes. Um, <laughs> but, but I'm also, that's, it's got me writing. Because uh, one of the things I learned while I, I started to obsess about stand-up comedy writing, because I wanted to, if I was going to put up, put together a performance, then I wanted to know what's been done. That was the biggest thing. Has has there been another Jim Carrey type out there? Uh, fortunately, no. He's he's pretty standalone <laughs> with the contortionist comedian thing. And then have there been other doctor ones? Uh, so far, it doesn't seem to be many. I know so, a few, but they're I don't think they're practicing comedy yeah. or or yeah. medicine. <laughs> Neither nor. Yeah, <laughs> it's a tough line to walk. There was a uh, guy named what was his name? Don. I'm going to forget. He may still be working too. Um, but when I, I used to run a comedy club in Seattle, the comedy underground, mm. and he would come into town and what he would do to, cause he would come in as a middle act. Cause he was not a headliner sure. and he would get room. He would get hours at the local emergency room. So okay. he would go, he would go in yeah. there and pick up extra hours as a doctor to pay for <laughs> Just gig work to make yeah. up for the money he wasn't getting to get it's there. the gig economy for doctors. Yeah. Yes. I'll yes. Say, one thing I should mention as part of my reasoning here for, for making a bit of a switch is I'm an unlicensed medical doctor, so they don't want to hire my kind. 
Oh. I can't pick up shifts at the, the emergency department. They, they won't take me. I uh, hate to break it to you, but yeah. I'm also an unlicensed medical doctor. <laughs> technically, well, technically yeah. speaking. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. And so when you put on job application, well, yeah, I'm an unlicensed medical doctor. They don't love it. No. Uh, but and, <laughs> yeah, so I've, I have a few gigs that come up once in a while, doctor related that use the knowledge, but you can't really practice. So, oh, okay. Uh, so I've I've found financially that the um the the acting is it's making more money than the doctor stuff did. I've <laughs> I have a little ratio in my head running now of which you know who's going to win this. So so far I will admit that the medical exam review has it has a lead, but I did an audition yesterday for contortionist yoga thing. Wow! And if that one pays off, then then acting will be in the lead. There you go. Now but, uh, now you could you can get to Hollywood. And there's mm -hmm. actually a, an EMT buddy of mine who was on my Hallmark movies as a set medic. So you could probably get a job as a set medic yeah. and then it just, yeah. you're, you're, you're there, you know, maybe slip one of the actors like a Mickey. Yeah. So they, they're not coming around, but you know what? I read his sides while he was <laughs> on <laughs> I got the this. cot. I think I got it. We need an actor stat. <laughs> that's, that's the dream scenario. That would give me less anxiety. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we need a doctor Ooh. well that's got to be pretty exciting to be sort of uh, making this sort of performance transition kind of yeah uh it's and, it feels like i was suppressing a lot of myself for for all these years but the bright side is that like even in med school i think the, the best doctors are also great actors so uh you have to you know when you have just told someone that their son died from a heroin overdose. And then the next room you have, Hey buddy, <laughs> you know, you're bright and perky again. There is yeah. quite a bit of that. And you, you know, you don't go full method for any of that. <laughs> uh, it's you, you are reciting lines because uh, doctors, part of our training is to know what to say in the right moments, oh. even if we're not necessarily in the right mood for it. And, and that's actually part of your training. Yeah. Like, because and I've, you know, I've been in the situation where someone, uh, let's say that was one example, but one where I actually, that was a doctor that I was with did the talking for that, but one, you know, suicidal patient, you have to say the, these specific words of, you know, uh, and, and physical actions as well, mirroring them and like mirroring the right words, say, show that you're understanding and everything. And I had friends next to me who were like, afterwards we're like oh you're gonna be a great doctor and all of my head i was just like well these are my lines that i say here to mm. show and I, this is the way i say it this is the face i make to convey empathy which makes me feel kind of like a sociopath in the moment but it's you know to to, to be appropriate to them <laughs> yeah uh that's that's how to do it so interesting interesting yeah. um are you taking any sort of uh sort of a adjacent acting lessons or like improv or anything like that to sort of sharpen your, your performance skills as you're going down this road? Uh, I, I probably, I would be where I making more money, but mm -hmm. that's, that is one issue is uh, not making enough money to do. I, things are picking up with the acting stuff. So I might, but um, not, mostly I'm, I'm actually very appreciative of the podcast currently because that forces me to improvise uh oh, that's week. true yeah you yeah. do a lot of improv and yeah and that I, and then sketches and then also for uh uh now with tiktok and the these various social media apps there is an obligation for actors to get followers so uh yeah. i i'm having to come up with stuff and do it but but i also remember like in my childhood i had i had reportedly the, like some of the best training available <laughs> uh i was trained and so now it does feel a lot like you know just it, it all feels natural to me so it's so, so it's still in the muscle memory somewhere yeah well, that's and, and i've 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 asked these directors because I, I worked on oh i should mention the other ones let's see first thing i got well I've, I've been doing um the very first thing i got was actually uh dubbing over foreign films because okay i showed that i've i i went to a networking thing with the uh, the, the producer who was associated with that short film I made, um, yeah. he was the one who like gave me a hundred dollars to put it together okay. um, and made a documentary about me doing it. So <laughs> went to his networking thing, his boyfriend 
told me about his job and that he needed voices. And then I demonstrated like, um, oh, we are some big old boy. And like some other voices in the moment that, uh, and he, so, so that he was like, please send me a demo tomorrow or tonight, whatever. And uh, I did. And so um, that's on my, I have some of that stuff in my TikTok. If you guys need to see that. Yeah. Dr. Well, London Smith, Dr. All, London Smith. And then all you have to do is start, you know, up in the ante in terms of the guests you get on your show. So you, so you start yeah. getting some people that are, you know, in a position to recognize your talent. I guess that is the trick because we've, we have tried to get bigger people, but then it, it's mostly a thing of like, look who was on our podcast as opposed to making actual connections. Interesting. Uh, which, Interesting. but that, that was before I, I was, I was trying harder at that earlier on. Uh, yeah. So that has changed, but oh, the other, one of the first parts I got was for contortionist. And I know that, um, which I'm finding is a very useful thing to be able to say, oh, casually, I, yes, you're looking for contortionists. I can do that. And also the rest. <laughs> um, but the, that director was uh, very, um, what's what, he, he was praising how well I, what, what I was acting in between shots too. You know, okay. I, I made it fun and whatever. So he wants me to do more work for him. I keep asking for feedback from these people and they keep being nice about it. So that's good. Either they're all dishonest or I'm still good at it. Good. Uh, and yeah, then of course, so, um, when you do eventually make the move, you'll have to start thinking about representation. Right. I, right. I did get one agent. I say it like, like I, I have an agent and they do send me things once in a while, but, uh, they aren't, they, they accepted my submission very quickly. So, yes. uh, and they send me mostly things that I can get on my own. Uh, so I just get on my own, but some things they do send me that's different. So that's, uh, that's you got to start with yeah. that, that kind yeah. of level of, of attentiveness or lack of thereof. Yeah. But I'll say, I did reach out to my old agents. They, they didn't reply. My manager eventually replied. Uh, okay. But but yeah, they were, they told me, um, well, very nice by the way, but they, cause I asked for an honest opinion on everything yeah. and they said, uh, it's very diverse focused right now, diversity focused. So, but they were also more about dramatic work. Whereas I happen to have a leaning towards comedy. So, right. Right. Uh, Interesting. Well, mm -hmm. the diversity thing kind of goes to the side when you start talking about contortionism. You know, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I don't know how much of the, the social gamut and spectrum contortionists mm -hmm. cover. So yeah, you may have a bit of a lock there. You're like, Oh yeah. You, you know, you have such a whitewashed cast of contortionists here. <laughs> That's all. They're always getting that. So besides this, what else, uh, what else is happening? I mean, what happens in Rockwell, Texas? I don't even know. Is it close to Dallas? Where, where yeah, is it? Yeah. It's uh, like the, like a 30 minute drive from Dallas to the East. Um, okay. It's the smallest county, and for years it was sorry, smallest county in Texas, and uh, for years it was the fastest growing. So mm. it's um, it's pretty white. I don't go out that much because uh, that you know there's COVID still, so yeah. I'm not desperate to to get out much. But um, grew up here, so it's um, it's all right. I basically, if I want to do anything remotely industry related, then it is a drive to Dallas or elsewhere. Mm. Um, and rent rent is pretty high here. So uh, really, yeah. I mean, because oh, it's because it, it's so close to Dallas. I'm talking to someone in t San Francisco, so I guess I can't really. Make well, no, I can under, no, but I understand yeah. if it's that. I mean, because you know, most of the the bedroom communities mm -hmm. around San Francisco are very expensive. In fact, my wife and I we just moved to Grass Valley, California, which is like an oh. hour north of Sacramento, because we were paying exorbitant rent and we wanted to buy a house. Yeah. And uh, so I drew a we drew a circle around the Bay Area, and then we drew a bigger circle, and then we drew a bigger <laughs> circle. So now we're three hours away. But okay, uh, <laughs> oh, you're well out then. Okay, but, uh, uh, it's very nice. Well, I will say we do have an In-N-Out Burger, one of the few in, Whoa, in Texas. See, we, don't, so. we, don't, we don't have one of those here. Yeah. So I guess here. in that sense, I'm I'm close to Hollywood in that sense. The, there's one dedicated Starbucks, and it's four freeway exits away from mine. Okay. Uh, and then there's yeah. one inside a, a Safeway, but those don't count, do they? No, no. I, I mean, it, it, on a rough day, it does, but yeah, no, not a one to sit and write. But um, most of what I do 
these days, if I'm not, if I haven't booked anything, then my day usually consists of I'll go uh, and just try to write things. So I'm going to stand up. The latest thing in stand up has been uh, I seem to have a knack for writing one liners, which fortunately is uh, supposed to be hard to do. Uh, yeah, it's it's not an easy craft. Yeah, uh, that's impressive. So that's, that's what I hear. like. Once again, it's very much how I write for the podcast. Oh, the other issue with the podcast is that I it's improvised. So it's not like I can I have to shoehorn in a one liner if I do. And then it's buried usually. So it this has been easier. So I uh, for a few weeks, I've been just, just pitching whatever I whenever I think of one and uh, they they've been well received in that group at least so that's good um yeah and then uh the other thing i have been writing because i hear that writing even because acting you have to find the right director you have to casting everything has to line up to some degree uh with writing if you write a good script it'll get seen like regardless from what i've theoretically been told and read yeah. theoretically yeah yeah so <laughs> that's uh that's one thing i've been focusing on i, I wrote the first draft of a pilot um, and it's, uh, I don't know if I haven't read the, I haven't done the deep dive studying on that, but, uh, what I'm trying to write to is the lead protagonist is it's a drama for him mm -hmm. and for everyone else to sketch comedy. Oh, interesting. Yeah. I don't, well, I'll see if <laughs> it, it sounds challenging and it feels challenging to write it, but that, I don't know. It to some extent, that's kind of how it felt going through like med school and stuff. Is I'd see funny things happening all the time, try to write it down, but I have to be serious about what I'm doing. Yeah. Well, one thing you can try doing, and you've probably thought about this, uh, because I've I've did it with a project, is turn it into a podcast and just see if you can make it come to life in audio. Okay. Cause you can really play with sound effects and background and all that stuff and really kind of make it, you know, the the whole theater of the mind thing. Yeah. I know with, yeah, with any of them, it's, yeah, finding the venue. Venue is sort of the yes. thing of questioning how much of this can be done live versus, and also with, with the stand-up stuff, I didn't quite know, is this going to be a variety act? Is this going to mm. be whatever? Because once again, the, with, with a stand-up, I'm like, uh, well, how do I incorporate contortionist stuff? Stand-ups are supposed to stand still. That's the that's the bit for them. Yes, it's just yes. material that's carrying them but yeah and then uh, it's also the the you know where it's you know the one room thing makes yeah. it a lot more palatable to a low budget mm -hmm. and a, yeah. i mean i don't know if you saw the whale yet yes uh, oh, so Fraser. Good. but yeah. i mean it's it's all in his house and there's yeah. a little bit of sh a shot on this front porch occasionally mm -hmm. but yeah there's there's one and of course that was first of all was adapted from a stage play but second of all it's like you get the feeling uh of of his character is like basically trapped in this house yeah he kind of can't leave and now neither can you you're in there yeah you're stuck you're, with it and if this whole yeah, yeah moving it all is such a labor yeah yes all yeah that so, feel of so trapped. but uh yeah that's one of the things we're trying to do with this screenplay is how do we reduce the number of locations when we first wrote yeah. it we were very grandiose let's let's go all over the world and mm. now it's like can we make this happen in a house yeah. <laughs> that's so how I, how is your partner in podcasting, Cameron? Oh, he's good. Well, sorry. Right now he has COVID, but generally, oh. okay. <laughs> overall, he's he's good. Uh, yeah, he's, um, let's see, the latest thing from us. I mean, we just, he brings new stuff to the podcast all the time. What's What's fun about him is, for one thing, unlike myself, he doesn't have the excuse of a child actor stuff. He's, he's just off the cuff. This is how he is as a person. Mm. Uh, no training to be as funny as he is but and he uh, is funny he is funny yeah. guy yeah uh yeah he's basically just a fan and then he's one of those friends that you grew up with and I've, i have a few of them i'm trying to get on the podcast with those friends you grew up with who were the funniest person in class and then they don't go into comedy because for, for what it, i'm sure plenty of reasons to know they want they'd it. like to make a living they'd, yeah they, they'd like to have a roof over their head they, they don't want to have a doctorate degree and <laughs> sit around <laughs> writing a, a pilot uh so yeah he um anyway he's uh he's great on it and let's see we got yeah a, a few other of our close friends who are once again funniest people growing up um and who i i actually was introduced to steve martin as a writer as a person one time whenever i was at 
one of those other friends. Our hundredth episode featured oh, nice. a friend of ours, Jake Davis. Actually, we're coming up on our two hundredth now. But oh, wow. for our one hundredth, we um had this friend on, and uh, his family taught me about Steve Martin by I went to their house when sixth grade, and I kept making jokes that would have killed at school. <laughs> <laughs> I would have been so good at school, but their family wasn't laughing. And they they referenced this movie. And then finally, I was like, can I see that? And it was Three Amigos. So oh. saw Three Amigos. And I was like, okay, that's the key. That's how to get these people to laugh. And uh, yeah, that was that was a, a game changer. So um, anyway, that that friend who has that sense of humor, I think every time I've been to his house, we've rewatched it. Oh, that's um, funny. Yeah. So that's and another friend who was funnier than us. Uh, he he was this. So that was that was Jake Davis. Another friend is Chad Rush. He is one, and these are all names that you will not hear <laughs> elsewhere. <laughs> but uh, he, I brought up because I saw him recently. One of the things I had to note in my head growing up with him is, I can't play gay chicken with him. If you're unfamiliar with the game, I'm you, not familiar with it by name. Yeah, you you go up and you pretend that you're gonna kiss the guy, and uh you'd whoever's more committed to the bit will go further towards the kiss and i knew i could never play with him because he and i would both who knows how far we would take it oh boy uh yeah so <laughs> i was like no i have to have to cross that one off possibility list because i had <laughs> saw other friends you know be beaten by him i in, see i see the game. Interesting. they would give in but uh anyway that's that's the kind of person who very much commit to the bit uh, would take it as far as he could and okay. that's yeah uh, right. anyway that's extremely relevant but uh that's that's the kind of person we like to have on our podcast so actually this is a good time for me to call out if you're listening and you would like to be on a character-based improv comedy podcast as long as you have a good mic and you can come up with a character and a reason for that character to be there hit us up uh because we i like bringing in the people who aren't famous um it forces us to to try to be better nice. and also sometimes they're funnier than the the comedians so well that's great so how do how did they what's the best way for them to yeah. contact you um well so you could send us a dm uh jock doc podcast is the the handle on uh, whatever instagram tiktok uh twitter what is, uh, twitter yes all these uh or just jock doc podcast at gmail.com okay. uh so if you want to get just uh, if you're interested and you have the mic, then like, it, it's kind of like comedy bang, bang, except uh, once again, we prank the listeners with a medical lesson. Yeah. So, yeah. And it is a lot of fun. I think I've been on there th like three yeah. times now and it's, and you're always yeah welcome to come back again. Thank you. Well, it's uh, super fun. So I would encourage anybody yeah. listening, whether you're in this business or not, of course, like you said, if you have to have a mic. <laughs> yeah. That's, that is the basic. Yeah. Step. But, but, that, I mean, but you know what? Do. Ever since COVID who doesn't have a mic. Mm-hmm. I mean, a lot of people use them to play video games. So sure. Sure. Upgrade. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's, well, that's very kind of you to throw that offer out there to people. I think that's great. Yeah. Well, it's, it's in part to be charitable and it's also because it is annoying to find guests. So, <laughs> uh, and I'm, I'm the one who does all of that. It's, okay. Uh, cause it's my, my name out there, I think is part of the reason. And also it's, I'm more organized and uh, other people have day jobs. <laughs> Yeah. And I'm trying to make this stuff my day job. So exactly. Well, good, good. Yeah. Um, what else can, uh, what else didn't I ask you? Uh, did, let me, did. let me go through. Oh, I can tell you. So, uh, so, so that, that one um, latest contortionist thing I did, uh, that's for a movie called outside the house. It's a short film um, okay. that should be out eventually. Uh, let's see. What are the other, Oh, I'm, I think I'll be at South by Southwest. I say, Ooh. I think I've been told that I should be there for an announcement. Um, I've, I've been cast as the uh, corrupt cop in this. It's a comic book that they're releasing a live action version of the comic book with the comics. Oh, the wow. Time. So that's yeah. interesting. So uh, anyway, they, they're, they have some big announcement that they're going to do at South by Southwest. So you got to figure out how to get it. You have to figure yeah. out how to get over there. So yeah, be I've, I've been told to make an appearance. Okay. So, uh, and they've like interviewed me and stuff. They already asked. I, I don't know if the the interview is up there, but it's uh, vindicated the series.com and 
they asked me for my fans, um, any message for my fans, which I thought was very presumptuous uh, <laughs> to, to be asking with this thing. But uh, anyway, funny. I, I think I came up with a good answer for, well, I, uh, real and a funny. So, uh, well, good. I'll put some of these, uh, these links up, uh, in the blog piece that goes with the show and people can click over and yeah. check, check some of this stuff out. Um, let's see the, another one was, uh, Oh, I portrayed, if anyone's familiar with the, uh, the, that cult in Waco once upon a time in the Waco siege. Yes. The fire. Yeah. The Branch Davidians. Yep. Turns out I bear a striking resemblance to the David cult leader. Co- David Koresh. Yes. And I was cast in a British documentary uh, to play him. Yeah. I wore a wig and glasses, but and I think my brother actually would have been the the closer fit, but I was pretty good for a documentary. Uh, oh, but yeah, I they, they called me up and they were like, uh, for one thing, do you feel comfortable playing David Koresh? And I said, I'm not familiar. But sure. Uh, and then they clear up. I, I, because I, if it's Waco, I don't care about Waco. I know where did, that is. Did that come out? Has that come out? Uh, no, that's that. I think they, they probably just finished filming or may still be filming because they were still oh. getting shots back in uh, Britannia. Oh, they were okay. only, they were here for a while interviewing, you know, people who were, it's the 30th anniversary, I think, this year. So okay. that's, that's why the timing. So um, are you like in those, uh, those recreated scenes or yeah, something where you're sort yeah. of moving spookily in the background or like talking oh, to people or I think I'm moving spookily in the foreground. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, uh, it's, it's close up shots. So oh, it's okay. me, me driving a car and I was so scared. Here's, here's an acting tip for anyone. Uh, I, so they, they said, we're looking for a classic car that meets sort of the same sort of car that he drove. Uh, are you good uh, with stick? Because we don't want to have to look for other cars. And I can drive a stick shift would be the, the term I would use. I can do it. I I don't think it, I wouldn't love like it. Like I'm a doctor. Like yeah. I'm a doctor. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Like, so I practiced driving my brother's stick shift, but I, uh, it was, I had so much anxiety. It was like, this is the part of acting where I was like, oh, this is why people could be scared or anxious. This part of performing. But fortunately, I got there and it wasn't automatic. So we, uh, uh, no one has to worry on for, for how that documentary shoot went went a few months ago. Well, I'll, I, I always love any excuse to talk about the stuff that I've worked on. So I did yeah. this Halloween movie for for uh, the Hallmark Channel called um, Monster Makers. And we had a, an actor in there and she was a cop. She played a cop. And she was, I think, in like her mid-20s or something like that. And she's supposed to drive and... Uh, uh, end up picking up two of these characters. One of them's a, uh, uh, a kind of a hobo character and the other's like a, a cop, but they're both out of this black and white movie. They've emerged from this old movie. And uh, although they look like regular okay. people, but their clothes are kind of weird looking and stuff. But anyway, so <laughs> there she's dry. She's got to drive up and then stop. And she, she only on the day of production says, I don't know how to drive. Oh, at all? At all. <laughs> so one of the uh, one of the the uh, transpo guys works with her for hours and hours and hours. She finally, yeah, okay, she's she's got it down. So she, <laughs> she she's supposed to drive up, jump out of the car, pull her gun. So she drives up, jumps out of the car, pulls her gun, but didn't think to put it in park. And the car keeps rolling and smashes into the side of uh, another car we're using for the production. At least it's for the production, I guess. But well, still. yeah, except the the accident's not supposed to happen, and uh, yeah. so, and yeah. this this car, the the one she ran into was a Dodge minivan that was like the latest model. It was like a trade out deal for the movie, mm. and there was only the only one we had. Yeah, and so we had to keep shooting it from because for uh, a stunt guy drove it over a curb and blew out the the front tires. <laughs> there were no replacement tires for this car. So eventually by the end of the movie, we could only shoot it from one angle because there was a giant dent in one side and flat tires on the front. <laughs> but anyway, that uh, was, that was, we, uh, I remember I somehow somewhere got the rough cut of her, of her jumping out of the car. And it was just the look on uh, her yeah. face. She was of course horrified. Yeah. Yeah. Not only well, did I, she, you know, it was in front of all these people, but she'd also just ruined two cars basically. <laughs> 
basically. And during a production. Yeah. Yeah. I, that I had, I still, yeah, for all my, you know, relief that it was an automatic, I still was anxious and I was, I was talking up the, the owner of the car. I was befriending him yeah. and, you know, uh, cause he was there, but and uh, by the way, I was driving for most of the shoot. I thought, cause they mentioned, uh, we'll do some shots in the car and like the, the call sheet, whatever said shots in the car, uh, me and a uh, or David Crash in a bar, and I was like, "Oh, bar, yes, I'm comfortable there." Uh, <laughs> unlike in this this car that I don't own, but I, it did end up being just a whole lot of driving for almost all of it. Wow. Uh, so such relief that it was an automatic. Funny, um, funny. I did remember one more role that I would like oh, to mention. Yes, yes, please. It comes out in June, uh, but there's a heavy metal band called Frozen Soul. Okay. And I um heavily featured in. There a music video that'll be oh. coming out then, and uh, well, very you're covering, you're covering the gamut. It's fantastic. Yeah, they uh, once again. I I haven't gotten any roles via audition yet. I've only gotten them like send them contortionist video, send them just me a slave doesn't, video of me. Doesn't matter. However yeah. you get them. However yeah, get and them. Uh, yeah. So this one he was. Uh, they they love that, and I'll say for anyone out there in casting or directing, uh, whenever you're trying to get that perfect angle, and you say, hey, can you? lift that thing up just a little bit over your head i can get that angle without you having to move the camera That's, nice which it it genuinely was a difference i think oh. uh, quite a few times that just because otherwise they have to reposition this they have to compromise yeah. something on their end uh but no my arm my shoulder will just tip a little oh. out of joint just a little per perfect <laughs> yeah anyway that's it all right, London. Well, thank you so much for, for jumping back on Succotash. Glad to have you back on. People can hear you on the Jock Doc podcast, uh, available wherever podcasts are streamed yes. and or downloaded. And you drop new episodes weekly. Mm -hmm. And That's so right. always something fresh. And uh, separately, also, I have my own uh, Dr. London Smith, Dr. London Smith, uh, my own what social media accounts, especially my TikTok, has a lot of separate okay. stuff now. So okay. if anyone wants to check those out. And we'll have those links fun. up on the site. So thanks again and uh, look forward to seeing you again soon. Yeah, thank you. You too. Take care. And now, here's your host. Thanks again to London Smith for jumping up on the Zoomy Zoom and yakking it up with me. The main jumping off point for him is jockdocpodcast.com. That's spelled J-O-C-K-D-O-C-P-O-D-C-A-S-T dot com. But you don't have to even remember or write that down. Go over to SuccotashShow.com. There's a link right there in the blog entry for this episode. In fact, there are links for some of the other projects he mentioned, like David Diamond Hands on TikTok, William Does Streaming, and Frozen Soul. Find all those links at SuccotashShow.com. Check us out on Facebook. Just a few more bits of business to get to before I ring down the curtain on this episode. We did finally get a call in on the Succotash and Runaway Truck Ramp hotline at 1-818-921-7121. Oh, almost forgot it. But as has been the case recently, I cannot make head or tail out of this. So here you go. And one more time. Just once more. Man, I hope we don't owe someone a royalty on that. Next, let's grab hold of the tweet sack, hey Tweety, and see who's been throwing our at Succotash show handle around in their socials. First off from SoundCloud, we heard from Helen and Poopa Loopa. <laughs> Thanks, Poopa Loopa. And then from Insta and Twitter, we got shouted out from the D-Head Factor, who is our friend Jabs down in Australia, and has told me that he has finally started laying down a new season of his long-awaited season three of Boganwood, the soundcast. Let's chat podcast. Science comedian. Versenary One. Glowpunk. Bill Lernis. Misfit Scully. Hunter Block. Audio Master. The Sklar Brothers, and Paws the Dinosaur Hunter, Moonlight Artist, I Shake My Head with Lisa and Sam, Sean Pratton, Dave in the Cave, Baxter Forest Twilight, Of Mice and Men and Monsters, Salty Language Podcast, and Never Explain Anything. 
That's going to do it for Epi 340. I have to go over to the network president's office now and explain why we ran so far overtime this episode, but I think it was worth it, don't you? Well, I'm taking the heat for that. Why don't you jot down a reminder to come back to this very same feed next week to catch Tyson Saner in Succotash episode 241. In the meantime, if you find yourself being chased down the street by a vicious dog and you manage to leap to safety through the open window of a passing car and the startled driver looks down at you in their lap and asks, have you heard anything good lately? Won't you please pass the succotash? You've been listening to Succotash, the comedy soundcast soundcast with your host, Mark Urshaw. Brought to you by Henderson's Pants and... Imagine your company's name right here. Rate us and review us at Apple and Google Podcasts. Find us on the web at SuccotashShow.com. On Spotify. On Stitcher. On iHeartRadio. On YouTube. On SoundCloud. And wherever fine soundcasts are streamed and or downloaded. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Succotash Show. Like us on Facebook. Email us at marc at succotashshow.com or call into the Succotash Skype line at our toll call number 818-921-7212. You can also upload clips from your favorite comedy soundcasts directly to us using our direct upload link at hightail.com slash you slash Succotash. Succotash is produced and engineered by Joe Paulino through the auspices of Studio P. Sausalito, the home of the hit. Our hosts are Mark Hershon and Tyson Saner. Our musical director is Scott Carvey. Our booth assistant is Kenny Durges. Succotash is executive produced by Mark Hershon. Until next time, I'm your loyal booth announcer, Bill Haywatt, reminding you to please pass the Succotash goodbye. This has been a Succotash Patch production.